Привет, друзья! Как дела? My name is Fedor, and today we have a very first episode of Be Fluent in Russian podcast. We aim with this podcast to give you guys enough of audio content in addition to our video content that we have on YouTube so you can train your listening, learn some new words and challenge you with our exercise for the week. We're going to have a weekly exercise that we're going to Uh, tell you guys what to do and what's the goal of it, what's the purpose for that exercise, so we can spend a bit more of practical time together. Not just, you know, we read you some story and that's it. We want to challenge you guys as well to, you know, help you with uh, the successful habits or successful exercise that we've seen work for other students as well. So this won't be just the audio, this will be audio plus some useful things that you guys can do throughout the week as well. We do have video format on our YouTube. We also will put this podcast on other platforms. I'm not sure how how successful, how quickly we can do that. But we aim, of course, to put this podcast on other platforms as well, where it's just audio. We'll see how that works. We'll see if we're going to be successful with that. If anything, if we're going to need your guys' help, we're going to reach out, of course, if we cannot do some things that we wanted to. And also, in addition to, before we start, this is a new format for us. So if you have any feedback throughout any episodes, any upcoming episodes too, put them in the comments on YouTube, send us an email, reach out to us in a way that we can get the message and we can listen to a feedback and change things as needed. We do want to be as useful as possible to you guys because... You know, this is not something that we're yet comfortable with. And any feedback will truly be appreciated. Okay, so format that we're going to go in. I have a short story. And we're not going to only read a story that's, you know, fictional. We will try to get some historical things from the past, from the Russian past, to give you guys a bit of an insight of how Russia was and how things were back then. So you can understand, you know, Russia a bit more and a bit uh, understand Russian culture more. This also helps me to learn some Russian culture as well. <laughs> you know, I'm still uh, not too versed uh, in, the, in the Russian history myself. So this will help me learn Russian history alongside with you. And we're going to have a short text. I will read it first throughout from the first word to the last, just without any stops, without any translations, just Russian as is. This will help you practice your listening and try to understand what I say as I'm reading. Then I'll break down each sentence and maybe highlight a few words in each sentence that are useful and you guys can take away from that particular sentence. Okay, so first let's read it all at once and then I'm gonna break down each sentence. And the story I chose for today was Alexander Pushkin, a famous Russian writer meeting the emperor. Now I'll be talking about why I chose this story after I read it the first time. Let's get right into this. Ранним утром 20 сентября 1826 года Бричка с Александром Пушкиным проехала московскую заставу. Прямо с дороги Пушкина повели во дворец. В большом кабинете Кремлевского дворца царь принял поэта наедине. Эта встреча стала следствием письма Александра Сергеевича государю в котором он просил разрешить ему выехать из Михайловского, где он пробыл уже два года, на лечение в Москву, Петербург или за границу. Беседа продолжалась больше часа. Пушкин честно признался, что, окажись он в Петербурге 14 декабря 1825 года, то стал бы в ряды мятежников и не скрыл своей дружбы с Рылеевым, Пущиным и другими декабристами. Царь говорил ему о намечаемых реформах. Об этой встрече в тот же день Николай I отозвался. «Я нынче долго говорил с умнейшим человеком в России». Царь объявил о прощении поэта. Пушкин же свидетельствовал в письме своей подруге Помещица Прасковьи Осиповой, государь принял меня самым любезным образом. Отныне Пушкину было разрешено проживать в столицах. Он поселился в Москве. Император освободил поэта от ведения общей цензуры и выразил готовность стать его личным 
цензором. That's it, that's the whole paragraph, that's the whole story. Before we continue into the breakdown, guys, I have a few questions for you. What did you understand from this? If you were to give yourself a percentage, 10%, 50%, 100%, which percentage did you understand? What percentage of this text did you understand? What were some words that you remember? Just say it to yourself, you know, just think of the words to yourself. If you were to, you know, give the overall summary of this text, what would you say? How did Pushkin meet the emperor? What have they talked about? How long were they talking? What's the outcome of this conversation? Was it friendly? Was it not friendly? Things like that. So just a quick pause here. What did you understand from this text? And now I want to, uh, before we move in into the breakdown, I want to mention why I chose this text and not any other historical things. Well, this text, uh, one of the reasons why I chose it is because you guys might already know Pushkin as a Russian famous writer, one of the best poets that have ever lived in, in Russia. And he was truly influential, influential not just in the literature world, but also in the, in the political um, uh, stance of, of Russia too. And so one first reason is that you guys might know Pushkin already. And secondly, this was one of the few historical moments that weren't, you know, war related. There's a lot of, of course, uh, altercations happening in, in that kind of time in Pushkin's, time, in Pushkin's time in Russia and in the world as well. And most of the stories were about war and other things like that. And I wanted to be more of a civil kind of a first episode and not have to talk about war so much. So that's the second reason for it. And then thirdly, uh, this story, and I'm going to break this down shortly so you can understand the meaning of their meeting. But back in, in that time, it's rare for a writer to meet an emperor. Those are two different worlds. Typically, they are opposing worlds. And it was interesting to me to read about this story myself because I didn't know about this meeting myself either. So let's get into the breakdown of each sentence. And I will highlight a few things from each sentence so you guys can t take away some vocabulary for yourself too. So let's start in the beginning. Ранним утром 20 сентября 1826 года бричка с Александром Пушкиным проехала московскую заставу. So this means in the early morning of September 20th, 1826, a cart or a britchka, how they would uh, call it back then, with Alexander Pushkin passed the Moscow outpost. So, well, first, ранним утром. Ранним утром means in the early morning. You can add this to your own vocabulary as well right now. And then secondly, I want to mention the dates and the years of, of Russian. You know, uh, in English, I would say 1826. So we break down the number into two digits, 1826. In Russian, we don't do that. You cannot say 1826. You cannot say that. You have to say 1826. So 1826 in Russian sounds like 1826 года, or the year of 1826. This is one of the hardest things for a learner to, uh, you know, to learn is to get these numbers right because it's just like a tongue twister, even for me. So make sure to uh, practice that a bit. Second uh, sentence. Прямо с дороги Пушкина повели во дворец. Right from the road, Pushkin was taken to the palace. And this one, you know, I would say the highlight is прямо с дороги. Прямо means straight. And you can be walking прямо, like you, you can walk straight, right? So прямо is straight, but also uh, Priyama means, I guess we say it in English as well, straight from the, the road he was taken into the palace, right from the road. So right away or immediately or straight from where he was, he was taken to the palace. So Priyama can also mean that, right right away or right from something. Then, в большом кабинете Кремлевского дворца царь принял поэта наедине. In the large office of the Kremlin Palace, the Tsar, or the Emperor, received the poet alone. So, not alone when it comes to he was alone, but they were alone, one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, наедине, the last word of the sentence, наедине, means that they were one-on-one. -on -one. You know, nobody else was in there. 
And that's a rare thing, even I guess even right now too. Uh, rarely when an emperor or the ruler of the country or the president would meet a person one-on-one. -on -one. Typically, there's going to be press, there, security, and all of that. Just shows the trust that the emperor had in, the, in Pushkin. Uh, next one is long one, so get ready for this. <laughs> Эта встреча стала следствием письма Александра Сергеевича государю, в котором он просил разрешить ему выехать из Михайловского, где он пробыл уже два года, на лечение в Москву, Петербург или за границу. This is very common for a Russian text if you are ever going to be reading Russian literature to have these long, complex sentences where there was going to be multiple parts of it, multiple dependent clauses, uh, you know, where something happened and things like that. So this is very common for Russian texts to have. <laughs> uh, okay, the translation is this. The meeting was the result of a letter from Alexander Sergeyevich, which Alexander Sergeyevich is the name and the patronymic. You know, in Russian, we, we have this, instead of having a second, um, sorry, the middle name, we have our name and the patronymic. So we borrow the patronymic from our fathers. So my patronymic is Alexeyevich because my father is Alexey. And so sometimes we refer to historical figures or people of respect as first name plus patronymic versus their last name. So as you can see here, Alexander Sergeyevich, we refer to Pushkin as Alexander Sergeyevich without mentioning his last name. Okay, the meeting was the result of a letter from Alexander Sergeyevich to the emperor, in which he asked for permission to leave Mikhailovsky, which was like a little village, where he had been staying for two years for treatment to Moscow, St. Petersburg, or abroad. So he was kind of sentenced to be in Mikhailovsky for his writings, and that was like his sentence. He probably wrote something against the, uh, the government, and well, against the Tsar, against the royal family, and he's been sent to Mikhailovsky to just be there away from the people. That's like that was common for the writers to experience. That's like their sentencing. And he asked the emperor to leave the, that village to go for the health issues to treat himself either Moscow, St. Petersburg or abroad somewhere. So I guess he had some health issues. And I guess the emperor granted him that wish because he's now meeting with the emperor. And the next sentence is Беседа продолжалась больше часа. The conversation lasted more than an hour. I would say the highlight is продолжалась, which means lasted or continued for a certain time. I guess the emperor and the poor have spoken for, for an hour. That's pretty good. That's a long conversation. Okay, next. Pushkin честно признался что окажись, again, a very long sentence, что окажись он в Петербурге 14 декабря 1825 года, and another long number too, то стал бы в ряды мятежников и не скрыл своей дружбы с Рлеевым, Пущиным и другими декабристами. Pushkin honestly admitted that if he had been in St. Petersburg on December 14th, 1825, he would have joined the ranks of the, of the rebels and did not hide his friendship with Rilev, Pushin, and other Decemberists. So that's the, uh, in December or, yeah, in December of 1825, there were riots against the royal family. And Pushkin said that, admitted to the emperor, straight to his face, I would have joined them if I, if I were there. But he was not there because he was sentenced to be away. So... This just shows Pushkin's character that he was unapologetically himself and did not even hide the truth from even the emperors. Probably he didn't have to mention that. Maybe he did. Maybe that's just him being himself and being not being afraid. And Pushkin has showed this character of himself throughout his writings. He's been sentenced to, to be sent away for <laughs> endless amounts of times. He was sentenced multiple times and he kept on writing what he truly felt. And maybe that's why he is one of the greatest and still is one of the greatest poets in Russia. Maybe that's why. Tsar говорил ему о намечаемых реформах. Tsar told him about the plan reforms. And I can imagine now you have to trust the person so much to talk 
to him about the upcoming reforms or the upcoming, I guess, changes in the society or in the government, uh, you know, kind of realm. And I'm sure that Pushkin had the power to spread that word across other poets or other people of influence. And telling him that is, is pretty, it's pretty interesting, you know, when a Tsar or a ruler would share his plans with someone. That's just pretty interesting to me. Об этой встрече в тот же день Николай I отозвался. Я нынче долго говорил с умнейшим человеком в России. Very interesting sentence. About this meeting, on the same day, Nicholas I, or Nikolai I, responded, Today, I talked for a long time with the smartest person in Russia. Calling Pushkin the smartest person in Russia. We now know of him as the greatest poet, but during his time, the emperor referred to him as the smartest person in Russia. Interesting. Tsar объявил о прощении поэта. The Tsar announced the poet's forgiveness. He was forgiven for what he wrote before, and now he can, I guess, live in the, in the city instead of being sentenced. Pushkin же свидетельствовал в письме своей подруге помещице Прасковье Осиповой, Государь перенял меня самым любезным образом. Пушкин also testified in a letter to his friend, the landowner Прасковья Осипова. Uh, the sovereign or the emperor uh, received me in the most courteous manner. Pretty good too. Uh, second to last sentence. Отныне Пушкину было разрешено проживать в столицах. Он поселился в Москве. From now on, Пушкин was allowed to live in the capitals. He settled in Moscow. I, I, I take the capitals were probably Moscow or St. Petersburg. Uh, maybe. Maybe some other ones were too. Maybe Kiev. Not sure. Император освободил поэта от ведения общей цензуры и выразил готовность стать его личным цензором. This is also very interesting. The emperor released the poet from conducting general censorship and expressed his readiness to become his personal censor. Um, even before USSR years, when there was a lot of censorship and you couldn't publish something until the censor, the censorship was done. Uh, but the emperor said, you can publish whatever you, you want to publish. No censorship to you. Do whatever you want. And he was ready to be his own censor, uh, to, I guess, for his works to be sent to the emperor straight away. And then he would approve or disapprove certain things versus having somebody else who is lower than the emperor, of course, emperor is the main person in charge, uh, to censor Pushkin. So this was also pretty interesting to me that stood out is that I'm sure that any writer, any poet would be delighted to hear this, that I don't have to be censored anymore. I can do whatever I want. So that was pretty interesting. What do you think about this text? Was it uh, good to you? Was it interesting to you? Was it fun? Uh, before we move into the words to learn this week and the exercise of the week. What did you think about this text? And now onto the words of the week or of this text. First is Rannie Utra. Rannie Utra, which means early morning. Rannie Utra. Then we have already mentioned this one, Priyama. And Priyama means either straight when it comes to the direction or straight away or straight from something. Priyama. Priyama. Then Naidinia. Naidinia is alone or one on one. Naidinia, we also have a good phrase. Naidinia samim saboy, which means to be on your own or to be one on one with yourself, to be yeah, somewhere alone. Наедине. Then we have выехать. Выехать means to drive out or to leave. Выехать. Then продолжаться. Продолжаться means to continue or to last. And in this text was the, the meeting lasted for an hour, for more than an hour. Продолжаться. A good, uh, I guess, sentence can be Сколько это может продолжаться? For how long? Can this continue or how long can this last? Maybe you are so uh, dissatisfied with the noise of the neighbors or something, right? And you can ask them this, this question. Сколько это может продолжаться? For how long can this last? 
Then we have Chesna. And Chesna means honestly, when you do something honestly. In this text, he honestly said he would have joined the rebels, right? Chesna. Abhivit, which means to announce. Abhivit. Abhivit. You can hear this word in the airport. Abhivit is to announce something, to announce that the flight is landing or the flight is delayed. Abhivit. And then, lastly, it's a phrase. Было разрешено. It was allowed. Было разрешено. And, of course, было means was. Разрешено means allowed. Было разрешено. So that's the eight words or phrases. Ранее утро, прямо, наедине, выехать, продолжаться, честно, объявить, and было разрешено for this podcast, for this week, and the exercise for the week. Put together your own story about your week. You can do it once a day, every day you can put together a small story about your day, or you can do just once, just one big story. And try to be as detailed as possible. When you're writing your own story, do not limit yourself to just the words that you know in Russian. Try to go for as much detail as you can, and maybe the words that you don't know in Russian, put them in English. Just try to be as detailed as possible. That's the goal. Don't limit yourself with just Russian words. Uh, because that's how you grow. That's how you learn new words. That's how you find out things that you don't know and need to know. If you want to tell a story about yourself and there's a few words that you don't know how to say, that's a sign that you need those words for future. And it's a good thing to discover those uh, you know, words that you don't know to add them to your vocabulary. And I'm sure you, you'll benefit a lot from this if you do this regularly. When you, challenge your, when you challenge your vocabulary on a consistent basis, you'll find out the words that you don't know. This is something that I, I don't think I've ever you know, mentioned on YouTube or anywhere else. This is just unique content that I only say to our BFLUN KM students and BFLUN class students. Uh, so you are getting an insight all on our you know, trainings too. And then put it into Yandex Translate and check if your story is correct. If what you are mentioning is correct, if what you're putting together is correct. And Yandex Translate is a very close translator. In fact, I didn't have, I put the text that we had today in Yandex Translate myself, and I didn't have to correct a word that it translated into. So you, you can have uh, your sentences to be corrected or translated in Yandex Translate. And that's it. That's it. And guys, uh, before we move on, before we leave, join our BFluent class. Type in bfluentinrussian.com slash register. For you to find out all the information about the class what we have there and it's a month-to-month -month platform where we have a lot of courses a lot of vocabulary a lot of exercise for you guys to check out and learn from and learn some russian on there check it out and i'll see you all with another podcast hopefully next week i'll be looking forward to your feedback and what you think about this podcast and uh we'll hear each other or see each other on youtube next week